first hand. Pukekohe Park, a circuit with a heap of character, just under three kilometres, seven turns, and this is a great racetrack with a very fast front straight, a lot of undulation. The fast right-hander at turn one through the tight chicane at turns two, three, and four. It is critical to get a good run onto the back straight, exiting turn four, and then the fast blast at about 265 odd k's into the hairpin turn five. A big surface change under brakes, which makes braking deep really tricky. Five and six, we've got the huge bump at six, and then between seven, the cars get completely out of shape. Let's go on board with the master of Pukekohe, Greg Murphy. It's not so much a hot seat as a wet seat today, as we look at this lap from the shootout, Murphy getting crossed up here at turn one. Fifth gear, turn two, all the trouble there in several years gone by as people pound across the curbs. Three and four, delicate balance here in third gear. Some choose second. Getting power to the ground is the critical issue. Flat shifting, speeds are down in the wet conditions, but it'll still be good for over 250k. Sixth gear, now picking the critical braking point just on the 200 meter board down to second gear the surface change look at the shine on the road absolute ice skating rink careful application of the throttle not to burst into wheel spin six then the big bump at seven this is a great ride in one of these cars the wheel work is huge camber change on the road as you exit turn seven and the laps are done here in sub 60 seconds. It's a great ride. Well, the rain has returned. We'll have the shootout and a lot more. Stay with us. Well, there may have been some hot moments in practice and indeed in regular qualifying here at Pukekohe, but there were certainly wet moments yesterday when it came to the warm-up and then the top 10 shootout. Let's have a look at some highlights of the action from the shootout yesterday, starting with Jason Barguana, the first cab off the rank. He'd worked his way through to the top 10 after some great qualifying. Into turns two and three here. It's very, very, very shiny, and you can see Barguana's car just ploughing through the standing water. He almost ran out of road on the approach then to turn four. But when you get to the other end of the circuit down here at the hairpin turn five, you'll see a very noticeable change in the track surface. You see there it changes to the old surface. And in the braking area, the grip level beneath the car varies. Here, where the car is at the moment, one level of grip. Then it's hard on the brakes. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. When you get right up to the top there, you see that the track goes all shiny. Different level of grip available there because of the resurfacing over the years. And that's very, very difficult to judge in this one lap shootout. Standing water there, not far past the exit of that hairpin as we get through this S bend that comes up to the final of the seven turns. And another resurface section where there's been a lot of bumps. And there it is as they get through. A lap here for the first time in the shootout. It was a pretty good lap. He pushed hard and uh, in very, very wet conditions. A 67-6. Tenth in the championship after the first couple of rounds. And as Bill pointed out accurately, fastest in session one yesterday in lovely conditions here. Fourth fastest in session two. And look at that water. Ninth in qualifying, obviously, because he's second out now. And then in the warm-up this morning, if you could call it a warm-up, because it's just absolutely howling, it was... Uh, Position 20 for John, but he's quicker than Barguana at the first split by 0.8 of a second, and that'll all be due to the fact that Barg's almost slithered out of road down there in the approach to 2-3. Sixth gear approach, still getting to just on 260-odd Ks at the end of this back straight. We call it a straight, but it's got a fairly hefty kink in it. The surface change then to the hairpin. Second gear, gentle, gentle, gentle with the throttle now for Bow as he goes second, third, fourth. He probably doesn't hook fifth in these conditions. There's been some resurfacing done here to try and iron out the problem with the bump that everybody talks about, but it hasn't completely solved the problem. And some resurfacing last night in the second split shows that John is up by nearly one second over Barguana. Shame that he made the mistake down the bottom, and he goes to position one with a time of 66.5. Radisic, Triple Eight Racing. 
20th in the championship, but that belies the speed that he and his teammate Max Wilson have showed in these cars. And they did some testing since uh, the wet round at Eastern Creek. Ooh. He made a late charge into the top 10 in qualifying. It was a hectic session, very entertaining, in fact, and work, uh, working hard to now reset the car for these wet conditions. And in the warm up, he was 29th, so that's not going all too well. He was uh, terribly out of shape on the run down to turn one then, and the car looked very, very nervous. In a spot on the track that you wouldn't expect to see it looking quite so lively. He's down on John by 0 0.08 at the first split down there at turn four, and now the run down the back straight. Radisich had a bit of a patchy start to the year so far, but as you said, Bill, he's had some good speed in isolated instances. Listen to the splitter on the front of the car just touching the road. In the wet conditions you can afford because there's less aero on the car, actually lower the ride height in search of grip. Many of the teams in these heavy wet conditions will have chosen a softer spring combination, loosened up the shock absorbers in both directions on the bump and the rebound side of the cycle, and just generally stood the front tyres up looking for a big contact patch on the road, just tried to make the cars a little bit easier to drive for these conditions, and that is a nasty car when it steps sideways like that, but a well, quick time, a quick time well, for Radis issue is pushing hard. And he's P1 by ahead of bow. two ten thousandths. That's uh, five five zero one against five five zero three. Wilson, remember tangling with Scape here down at turn two last year in the wet race on the Saturday. Remember in last year's shootout at the equivalent round, we actually ended up cancelling the shootout and reverting to qualifying. But that was because the conditions varied through the shootout and it was deemed by the Clark, of course, and Nabesco to have been unfair to other competitors. Up at the first split for Wilson by 0.07 relative to Radisich, his teammate. But I think you'll find that we get consistently average conditions here at the moment, Billy, so I can't imagine that we're going to get anything other than what we've got. And therefore, these times will stand. So this is all about sorting out the order of the cars in the first five rows for the race this afternoon. Wilson has changed teams a couple of times since joining V8 Supercar Racing. Strong pedigree in open wheel racing. Champ car that. driver, big split. Up 0.338, nearly four tenths of a second faster than Paul at that split. And uh, the condition's no less wet, so he's just doing a good job and maybe he's got his car set a little bit better. Not quite as sideways coming on to the front straight. On the step on the bump there, though, the car jumps away. Now, look, he lost time in the last sector. A lot of time. This is the championship leader, Stephen Richards, who has been particularly consistent so far in the first couple of rounds. And look at the Castrol Perkins Commodore out of shape off turn seven. Back to fifth gear and all the car wouldn't turn in for Richo then in the early part of the corner, but he makes the apex further around and the thing really snaking. Standing water tends to throw the car to the outside of the road here. What does the first split tell us on the exit of turn four? And he's up nearly three tenths of a second on Paul Radisich. Why is Richard so strong in the championship so far? Well, he had a couple of second placings in Adelaide and then a fourth placing as we look at the footwell cam of Richo heading down the back straight into the braking area. Fourth placing at Eastern Creek in those treacherous conditions. So being there or thereabouts at the point of the field has put him in charge of the championship. And he's oh. up now half a second on Radisich on the exit of the hairpin. Well, bear in mind, we've just seen three Fords go around and it looked like the Holdens were generally faster in the wet in today's warm-up for what it's worth. So we could see a bit of a reduction in times here as once again the car shakes. It's almost on the edge of adhesion there and the quickest time by Richards. But again, he... Like Wilson, he lost time in that third sector, but he had enough in the bank. It's very slippery. Yeah, we cars before. Like turn one there. Yeah, it's a little bit slippery out there. It's a real battle to get power to the road off the hairpin, and the drivers just gently apply the throttle, really, really trying not to make the car break into wheel spin. That's where the time goes. And then on the surface change here, Bill, as you come through turn seven, you can see that surface change. 
um, it's really diabolical because the car just goes from uh, one condition to another and then there's another surface change with a bump right here and that's upset a number of the cars there's the order well as you can see our increments don't go beyond the hundreds and that is why you see zero zero and then zero zero it is that close at the top but can this guy shake them up even more big reception at every corner for greg murphy here in New Zealand, what a busy schedule he's had. Did 19 interviews in one hour earlier in the week in Auckland. That just gives you some idea. It's like Mark Webber coming back to Albert Park for the Australian Grand Prix. Everybody wants a piece of him, but can he grab a good piece of Pukekohe here? And I'm talking about traction. Bit of a recovery for him at Eastern Creek in the wet where he finished fifth. He qualified poorly by his own admission there. He had a fourth and a ninth in Adelaide and He's in love with this track. He's done a huge number of miles here, as have all the Kiwis. They've got good intimate knowledge of the way the track functions. And he's traditionally been able to set up his car very well here. Ambient temperature at the moment, 17. Not unnaturally, the track matches that number at 17. And it's still just as wet now as it was at the start. So we're seeing a fair indication of how they all match up to each other in their setups. Murphy's fourth in the championship at the moment and goes to the top in a 65.26. Big margin, that huge is. margin. 1.31. So Murph's computing going, oh, hang on, that's all right. Well, yeah, that's terribly often. 21st in the championship is Todd Kelly with only 153 points. Remembering that Stephen Richards has got 360 and it's time now for his run yesterday. Virtually matched the time set by team owner and leader Mark Scaife and needs a strong result this weekend. And the car nasty through turn one and with the standing water just at the apex. It sits in the crevices of those ripple strips, Billy, and it's so difficult to get the car to grip up at the critical moment. He actually tangled with Marcus Ambrose in the warm-up this morning on the exit of Turn 4 and half spun the car and dislodged the front wing on the car. Shades of Eastern Creek where he was uh, off the track and as he re-entered the race, a couple of cars collected him. One of those was Jason Richards, in fact, which ended Jason's excursion and he was uh, going reasonably well to that point. So watch for a good performance today from Jason, the local who's not in this top 10, of course. It's a point three eight down. It's the middle diff ratio here, the three five. And at 7,500 revs at the end of the back straight with that diff ratio, you've got 268 Ks. And that's exactly what Todd had there with he was on the 7,500 rev limiter. He's not looking good on the splits relative to the Kmart entry of Greg Murphy. What's it like across the surface change? The car looks pretty stable. He's driven further to the right down there, but he's down the order. At one minute, 6.7 for position uh, number six for Todd Kelly. Essentially, Mark's always done pretty well at this track. It's got some characteristics that he likes. Oh, look at the car cross up on the exit of turn one in fifth gear. He's always been strong on making sure that he looks after the rear tyres, and that's one thing that you need to do at Pukekohe. That left rear tyre in dry conditions really takes a punishing. At the split to Greg, he's down 0.135 on the exit of turn four. And so far this weekend, he was second fastest in the first practice session, 11th in the second third fastest in qualifying fastest man in this morning's warm-up in conditions almost identical to this and critical moment for him he needs to be in the front part of this top 10 in order to try and recover from what's been a patchy start to the championship he's up at the second split oh that's a massive gain three tenths approximately basically all down the back straight so the run onto the back straight and the deep braking at the end of it is what does that billy did he get good traction out of the hairpin and what's the car like in this final sector he's using every last millimetre he looked very good Scaife to the top at 64.7. Well, awesome lap. That was, that car. Now, last year's champion, Marcus Ambrose. 13th quickest in the warm-up this morning, but he hasn't been out of the top three in the three dry sessions yesterday. But their cars didn't adapt ideally to the wet conditions at Eastern Creek. Are they any better this weekend? His teammate, Russell Engel, was pretty speedy in the warm-up this morning, Billy. So they may have found something when it counts. And look at the time at the first split. Up nearly half a second on Mark Scaife in only a couple of hundred metres of racetrack. That is extraordinary. But bear in mind, Scaife's uh, best sectors were his last two. So that'll be interesting. Scaife getting pretty close to the time he set after 15 laps in the warm-up. So that was a very, very good benchmark. There's the surface change. Goes all shiny right when you don't need it to. 
What's the second split tell us on the exit of turn five? Well, Slower yes. by nearly two tenths of a second. So Scaife did an amazing job under brakes at the end of the back straight and came onto that back straight with the right kind of pace. So Marcus dropped a bit of ground there. Can Last he, sector. Can he regain the momentum through one of the toughest parts of the circuit? Crossing the start finish line. Marcus Ambrose is second fastest and he did pick up some time. Only a fraction in that. Look at that. Very good effort. One minute 4.7477 for Mark Scaife. 7517 for Marcus Ambrose. Remember, this guy had two and a half tenths on the field in the dry and qualifying yesterday. He's our final runner for this top ten shootout, and he's down nearly seven, uh, six tenths of a second. Does he make up any ground in the final sector? Brighty goes to position four with a one minute 5.7407. Well, the $5,000 pole position check from Munro goes to Mark Scaife, and that is fantastic. Tough conditions out there, though. Well, I can't remember the last, uh, you know, <laughs> wet weather top ten we had, and uh, it's uh, it's bloody wild because you arrive at every corner like a pioneer. You don't know uh, how much grip you've got, and uh, it's it's uh, it's a fantastic circuit when it's like that because it's big and fast and flowing, and you've got to use your head, obviously. Feels like it's set in for the weekend. How much have you had to change the car, given that we were in the dry yesterday for qualifying? Well, we haven't had to change it too much, but I don't think there'd be a car in the field that's now a dry car. We've all got wet cars, and, um, you know, our cars uh, responded very well. We were fast in the warm-up, and, uh, you know, we've just got to, got to get a reasonable result this weekend, Rusty. We know you've won races here before, but you want to win a round. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Recapping that top ten, Scaife and Ambrose. Well, they're in a class of their own, really, in that shootout. A half a second on Greg Murphy, but then the increments are uh, not too big. Who to Jason Bright, Stephen Richards uh, quite a distance behind and the rest of them very, very close really before you get down to Jason Barguiner in 10th position. I think it's time we showed you some racing though. Three races in the one day and who knows what the weather will do. It's changing all the time. We'll be back. Coming up, race one, the sprint that starts it all off. We'll check out Auckland's proposal for a streetwise event and take to the harbour with Ford and Holden.